She is fierce, feisty, hard-headed at times. She models the way dynamic, enthusiastic, vibrant, passionate, committed. Bara is a passionate woman. Um, yeah, she loves her job. She she loves she, she takes her career very seriously. She takes her company very seriously. She she's a leader. She motivates everyone to, to kind of do their best. You know, she expects the best from everyone. So the first thing that stood out for me when I met her was her tenaciousness and her go-getter attitude that is so infectious that it actually rubs off on you. Strong, independent, not afraid to say what she needs to say when she needs to say it. Boss lady, inspiration, role model. She empowers everyone in, in a different way. Passionate, loving, feisty, in a nutshell, that's who she is. I am Farah Fortune, Director of African Star Communications, and what I do is I run a public relations business um, that focuses on making sure clients get their value for money, but also making sure we have fun. I always like to make the comparison to, to marketing because I feel like most people think PR is marketing and it's not. So it's not going to just put something there and say, listen, go and buy this product. It's actually creating a relationship between your audience um, and the product itself. At first, it was I wasn't really sure about this Pitbull in Heels name. Um, it was something that was, you know, said by a client during an interview and, and the person being, and the person interviewing had actually you know, quoted her verbatim. And, and the media just picked up on this name, this pit bull in heels, and that was almost 10 years ago. And it's just stuck with me ever since. Um, so I figured I might as well own it. I might as well own the name. If people are gonna call me this name, I might as well own it. Um, which has really helped in a lot of ways, because people don't actually tend to mess with you, because they actually think you are this little pit bull coming for them. <laughs> I'm very protective of my clients. I try to make sure that they get the best out of me, um, not just because they're paying us, but because I want our reputation to, to exceed itself. Um, and being a pit bull in heels has, has, a, has um, allowed me to really dominate my industry by being forceful. <laughs> I do the corporate side of PR, so I work with um, makeup brands, alcohol brands, um, restaurants, uh, fashion brands, um, anything to that scale. It's very exciting uh, to work within that space, but people also don't realize that it's also a lot of work. Um, if you're standing from the outside, it seems like you're working with these really cool brands and you know, you're doing amazing things, but it takes a lot of work to actually pull certain events off. What do you mean rotating one? That we're doing two in one day. We can't. You can't do more than two. You can't because you need a three-hour session for each one. You can't do more than Otherwise two. Otherwise, we're rushing people out. Out of date. Yeah. Because yeah. the thing is, if we do from two till three, that gives us another three hours between the next one, right? I've been here for just over four years, uh, full time, and I, th I stick around because it's nice to see a company who empower females. You know, we've always been an only female team and it becomes a sisterhood. There's a huge difference between celebrity PR and the traditional PR. Celebrity PR is really trying to sell a brand, a person themselves. You're trying, we generally don't like everyone we meet. It's, it's just human nature. But now when you do celebrity PR, you have to make sure that everybody, whether you like this person's talent or not, um, that you like them as a person. The first celebrity client was Liesl van der Best Hazen. I didn't realize I was her first celeb client because uh, she just handled everything so perfectionately and so perfectly. And uh, it just felt like I'd been part of her business and part of, of a team for, for quite a while. She had also, she was just starting out in her career as well. And we had just started the business and um, we were friends at the time and it just made sense. The one thing that stood out for me was how determined she was. And she came so prepared with a whole P media and PR and marketing plan. And for me, who is someone that had worked in PR and 
branding and marketing before, it really stood out for me. She, you know, she's also by profession a publicist. She used to work in PR before. Uh, she was a presenter or everything and a radio presenter. And she understood the business. So it was really great working with someone who really understood the business and was also able to, to help me um, just as much as I was able to help them, yeah. It's also about building a relationship. You're not just a number to a client, and that for too far I wasn't just a number. I wasn't just a number of 10 clients that she had or, or one client that she had on a book. I was a friend as well, and she was someone that I could confide in. Hi. So I'm here today to have lunch with Kim Jade, which is a very typical of, of us to just go out and actually meet our clients away from the office because the office can be a little bit stuffy sometimes and you want people to be relaxed so we're here to have a little bit of sushi today and just have some fun and just talk and see how everything is going she just grabbed a great campaign i just want to make sure she's okay i remember meeting this beautiful woman uh, when i actually won uh, the african woman award in zimbabwe and i was there to pick it up and she was one of the presenters and, and she came to me and she said, oh, I'd really love to work with you. And I said to her, if you really want to make it in this industry, you really need to move to Joburg right now because for the kind of things that you want to do and the look that you have, that's where it's going to suit you the best. And she did. It came a time where I moved to Johannesburg and had just started getting into the TV and entertainment space. And I needed, I needed the right PR team. So I did a lot of research and looked into African Star and I was so impressed by Fire and everything she stood for. And I was like, I need to meet this woman. This needs to be the person representing me. And that's actually how we met. Kim has also been announced as one of the faces of a huge cosmetic brand in South Africa. Um, so she's doing extremely well. It's, it's always lovely and, and, and I love, I think that's what I love about my job the most. I was an unrepresented presenter, very new to Johannesburg, very new to the entertainment space. And when I started working with Farah and Justine, who is my direct manager, I think a lot of things changed. Because we're now when clients want to book you or want to work with you, it's like, no, 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 you can speak to my management, please, thank you. It, they take you a lot more seriously and they respect you. And of course, Farah knows the rates and knows what you should be paid and how you should be treated. And that's something she will not settle on, which is incredible to be a client because you get respected in a whole new life. Being a celebrity changes people generally. I think it's really hard being a celebrity. I don't care what people say, I don't care how glamorous people think it is. I, I always feel the most sorry for celebrities because they give up such a huge part of their lives to, to, for people to be part of it. Um, and it's a choice that they make, um, but they lose a lot of privacy in there as well. And, and your life isn't yours and you get criticized and critiqued for everything from your clothes, to your jewelry, to the way you walk, to what you said, to what you put on social media. And, and, and that is, is, if you don't have some sort of psychological balance there, you, you can lose it. I was approached by a brand to mm. do a three month campaign. They're using one male in South Africa and one female in South Africa to go blonde for three months and use the product. Um, I would like to see you change your hair. Mm -hmm. I think it's time. Let's build on this image first with the darker hair mm. now. Mm. I would like to see you change your hair this year. Mm. I think we do need to change it up. We've been this Kim Jade mm -hmm. for a while now. We need to now be a new Kim Jade because you're a new Kim Jade. Yeah. I love seeing people have this dream in their head and, and us help them bring it to fruition. Uh, I think that's one of the most satisfying parts of doing celebrity PR. What makes me get up every day? Um, I have a 13-year-old daughter that I need to clothe and feed and put a roof over her head. Um, but just, you know, she looks at me. I'm her mom and she looks at me for everything. And I need to, I need to make sure that she has a sense of an example, at least, of um, what your life can be. And, and if you put your mind to anything, where it can go. Because she was three years old when I started this business. You know, she, she's my biggest inspiration. I think if I didn't have her, I may not have worked that hard. 
I probably would have been just traveling the world right now and bumming from one beach to another because that was really my life plan. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to be my own boss eventually, but I was like, I need to live this life and really do a lot of things. I'm very fortunate though. I've been able to do a lot of that beach bumming with her. And, and she's also gotten to see a lot of the world because of my work and, and just going on holiday with her. So it's been fantastic. Would I have been the same woman? I think I'd have been the same woman, but I don't know if I'd have been the same business woman even though she may not know it um, I push because of her and Leila loves this place uh, anything creative she loves so we try and come here to spend some time together don't always see each other during the week um, so holidays are really important and any spare time is really important to spend with her uh, I love spending time with family, I love spending time with my family. Most of our family live in Cape Town, so it's really important that we spend some time together. She's not cheap. <laughs> so I think, you know, for me, in this particular instance, she's been really motivating in the fact that, you know, I've had someone to do this for besides myself. Women Empowerment is really close to my heart because when I got into this industry, um, I actually realized how male-dominated it is. And, and that for me was quite shocking um, because a lot of the companies are actually run by women but not owned by women. And I realized that, you know, that women actually, 10 years ago, women didn't have the opportunities that they have today. There aren't as many grant programs for women. There aren't as many programs, workshops, just generally for women. And I really wanted to give women a chance to get their foot in the door and stay there. Um, and through that, just by trying to empower women in my own company, I only employ females and I only employ um, female suppliers if I can. Um, that's, that's what I do right now. We work in a very, in, in, an industry where there's not a lot of women firstly. But another thing about Far is she allows us to also um, grow within that space. So for example, I'm currently studying and she allows that. I mean, yes, we do have a busy schedule, but she empowers everyone in, in a different way. I work with only women in the company. There's only females in the company. And you can see with all the ladies in the company, they're also very passionate about it. They, they're ladies and they take their work very seriously. I've seen that as a lady, I can actually be what I want to be, what I want to become, because um, I get inspiration from them every single day. So I'm here today to spend some time with some friends of mine who have been in my life for a really, really long time. Um, they have been there throughout my journey of this business and they have really, really been amazing friends. A little bit annoying sometimes, but still amazing friends. Um, and I'm gonna spend some time with them now because we don't get to do this very often. Hello. Oh, you made it. How are you? I'm fine. Um, so there's two of my friends here today, Joe Budiba and Nadine Baba. Uh, Joe has been in my life the last maybe 12 years. She's been in my life, so she was here before the business started already. Um, she's the comedian of my friends, she's the one that makes everybody laugh. She is an amazing friend, been very supportive and I I'm very grateful she's still in my life today. And then there's Nadine. Nadine is a more serious friend. Um, we have completely different conversations, but the three of us get along so well. She's also a very supportive friend, very level-headed friend. She's the one that will just calm everything down and be a little bit more serious. So they're the opposite ends of each other, but we all complement each other so well. It's a bit unbelievable currently. Um, just remembering things, the small things that, that, you know, we went through to get to this stage. I mean, there were days where we would be turning over couches looking for coins just to put petrol in the car to make sure we get to, or to make sure Farrah gets to a, a pitch or an interview or a, a client briefing, you know. Um, and again, from the outside looking in, it's almost unbelievable the things that we went through. Um, and I think what I appreciate most is, is having witnessed the process. She's always made very, she's, she's very, you know, she's very strict about who she allows around her daughter for obvious reasons. So there's a lot of us that influence her in all of our different ways, you know, and that's something that she was, she's handpicked us basically to be there for her. So we've contributed towards Layla's upbringing in our own individual ways. Like she has a different personality with a different friend. We've got a good 
relationship, great connection, because sometimes Farah is busy. She travels a lot, so she's more comfortable when she stays with us. She's comfortable and Leila just loves it when she stays with one of us because then she gets to bond with us as well. Support is really, really essential, I feel. Looking back at it now, I feel like it's really important in order to make it because I have a child and, and she you know, was three years old when I started this business. So it was really, you know, if I hadn't had friends to help me watch her when I had to work at night or I had to travel or those things, I don't think I would have been able to really um, be where I am now because I would have missed out on a lot of opportunities. Yusuf Ramji was a huge part of my life when I started this business. Um, I had worked for a company that he also worked for at the time. Um, when I left, he was still there, but because, you know, I'd met him through, through work, he, he just played such a pivotal role in my life by really giving me great business advice, helping me network, he pushed me in the right directions, he pushed other people in my direction. Um, so he was really fantastic. I was the unofficial mentor. She always came to me for advice, um, and I always gave her the advice which I thought would be best for her. Uh, I introduced it to a lot of people within the industry, outside the industry, um, and always uh, she was uh, very professional in what she did, um, and uh, she always inspired somebody else, and I felt uh, with that potential, uh, Farah will go very, very far. And I think it's important that we are not selfish. We have to see other people grow and develop. And it fills me with joy and with pride to see people like Farah growing, making a success of her career, making her name for herself. And I think, think it's important for us to take the selfishness away and to make sure that we give opportunities to other people. Unofficially, Yusuf just became this mentor because he was really genuinely wanting me to succeed. I I'm very grateful for that. Liverpool legends are coming. We have Steve McManaman, we have Robbie Fowler, and we have John Barnes, who will be coming to South Africa to highlight um, a new memorial that will be going up in honor of uh, Madiba in Liverpool. Okay, have you done um, social media for all the, the stuff inside? Mm -hmm. Have you made sure everybody's got justice, made sure everybody's got waters, pens, everything, everything's done. The boxes you need to tick for great press conferences, make sure all your clients' branding are there, but you know, we rely on them to make sure that's delivered. If they don't have their stuff there in time, it's quite bad because they miss out on quite a lot of coverage, especially when you have branding sitting behind such important people. Um, we know for a fact it'll hit press and then your branding is there. I'm incredibly hands-on, I think just because you know, it's not that I don't have a great team. I have a fantastic team, but they also have their own jobs. So I need to make sure that I fill in when they aren't able to do other things. I would not say no. I'm not that tall. Whatever I ask my staff to do, I'm very prepared to do myself. What we do on the day, uh, we really manage the media. We really make sure that they know where they're supposed to be, that who they have access to in terms of speaking to them, what they can take pictures of, what they can't take pictures of, what questions they can ask, what they can't ask, um, and really making sure that the people involved from the client side are just as happy with what is being said. So it really is making sure that you manage everyone's expectations as well as, as getting as much ROI for the clients as possible and making sure your room is full of the relevant media. Um, that's always your biggest fear, that no one will turn up. So today we are at uh, Old Benonian Sports Club. Um, it's the Metro Stars Football Clinic, so they uh, coach children from underprivileged backgrounds as well as not so underprivileged. But every, basically everybody gets the opportunity to learn how to play soccer and really enjoy it. And hopefully there are some future football stars and maybe some Liverpool stars here as well. But you guys can sit up there and so when they come through, they're going to come through the gate over there and then go straight in and then they'll be on the field. 
Uh, Liverpool legends are coming. We have Steve McManaman, we have Robbie Fowler, and we have John Barnes. And they will be um, interacting with the kids, teaching them some skills. Um, and you never know, one day they might be watching them play in, in, in the EPL. You never know. <laughs> Okay, what we'll do here today is we take as many pictures as possible. Pictures of, of the Liverpool legends actually interacting with the kids. So what we'll do is we'll compile the day or compile the morning in terms of pictures, a press release, some quotes from the players as well as the mayor as well. And we'll send it out to media to garner some exposure for exactly what the tour has um, been for over the past three days, yeah. Can you please sign their shirts for them? Yes, he has. He came all prepared with a pen. The aim of today is really for the kids to enjoy uh, these moments with the legends, but the aim for us for today is to make sure that our client is happy, to make sure that there's some sort of media coverage around this, and to make sure that uh, when they open the paper in the next day or two or the next week, they can actually see that their event was there, it was successful, um, and they actually, the money that they're paying us, they're actually getting, they're actually getting their value back, so their ROI is there. I think the reason I've kept my passion for so long is because no two days for me are the same. I don't live the same day in my, in my industry, in my job. So we're here today at the gala dinner, all well, this evening. So we're setting up at the moment, and this is our gala dinner room. So everyone is in here. The muses are performing tonight, so they're over there, they're getting ready, the tech guys are doing run through, and our Liverpool players will be over there. So it's basically the Liverpool gala dinner. Uh, for the Liverpool legends. Everybody who comes tonight has bought a ticket because they are the ultimate of Liverpool fans and they want to spend some time with them and, and, and interact with them and get some photo ops. So it's going to be quite busy in here tonight, definitely. There have been lots of mistakes I've made in this business. I mean, we're 10 years old. I honestly don't think I would have gotten to this point had I not failed at some point. And I think that's the only way my business has survived, is admitting to the failures and making sure that we actually use them as stepping stones to be better. So everything's done. Everything is going according to plan. We're hoping tomorrow everybody wakes up and this is the only thing they're going to be talking about, that we're in the papers, that we're on the news channels, and everybody reads about how amazing this gala dinner was. We actually want people to have wished that they bought tickets to come. There's nothing, and I, I don't care what anybody says. For me, there is nothing like watching somebody's dream come true because you help them do that. And, and ultimately, that's what African Star is about. Uh, whether it's a corporate, our corporate side of the business, whether it's our entertainment side of the business, we help people's dreams and visions come to life. And I'll never be God, I'll never be able to, 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 to do what he does, but doing something like this, it brings me close to that feeling, definitely.